Welcome to the Philadelphia Zoo. Hey, story time friends. Guess where Miss Adoria is today? At the beautiful, gorgeous, wonderful, amazing Philadelphia Zoo, where I haven't been since probably the 90s. Very excited to show you. So hang on for some more adventures. Hi, okay. Kristen Waldron. How are Hi. you today? Good. Can you tell me what you do here at the zoo? I'm the chief of staff at the zoo. Oh, wonderful. I picked the right lady. <laughs> and what does that entail? What, what, is, um, what are your duties? and? Uh, a variety of things. Working on long-term projects for the zoo, our strategic plan, right. um, the campus planning, um, big initiatives like our big time exhibit. <gasps> Which I'm Stars. headed to. I'm really yeah, excited about that. It. You'll love it. <laughs> Um, was a huge project. I ran the education department here for several years. Oh, that's so. amazing. Has it been well attended, the big time? Oh, yeah, very popular. Has it been big time attended? Big time attended, <laughs> yes. And why do you love working at the zoo? Um, because I love seeing smiles on children's faces and creating that spark of curiosity and fun and joy um, and really connecting with nature. And conservation, hopefully, Absolutely. efforts for the future. Inspiring conservation is what we're all about. Because zoos have gotten bad raps over the years about being just like warehouses and entertainment things, but I know that zoos today work hand in hand with conservation yes, efforts we've had a all over the world. We have had 40 projects in um, over 27 countries around the world, so our conservation process is significant and spans the entire globe. That's amazing. Do you have any recommendations for me as a wandering around citizen to go to see? Yes. So or everything? Your, everything. <laughs> but on your way out of big time, make sure you take a stack of postcards yes. for an initiative called 30 by 30. Yes. Which means we're trying to protect 30% of our lands and oceans by the year 2030. Have kids get involved in that. We are sending these legislate. We are sending these postcards to legislators. Sign one. But if you want to take a stack back to the library, Absolutely. we would love to see that um, sent to New Jersey legislators. They Some have signed on, some were encouraging to get involved. And it's That's a really important initiative around biodiversity, climate change, and just overall the environment. Thank you. I'm, I am a big environmentalist, and I'm the green goddess at the library. So Excellent. anything I do, well, I always so encourage for... children to be great stewards for their planet, thank you. you know, and encourage them to love things like insects and bats and snakes and, Excellent. you know, all those wonderful critters that make up the whole cycle circle of life. One more question, please. Um, some of your favorite animals here? Um, well, we had a flamingo chick hatch on July 1st, oh so definitely goodness. go see that. Oh. Um, a new Andean bear named oh. Cinchi, very oh, active sweet. and adorable and um, definitely a, worth a visit. And then some of our ever popular, like our lemurs, we have um, over six different species of lemurs, one of the most diverse population of lemurs only found on the island of Madagascar. That's right. So, check them out as well. That's wonderful. And some baby lemurs too. Oh, baby lemurs. And can we just see your little, little cute little face? Yay, there she is. Look at her. She's so cute. <laughs> and <laughs> Thank I you live so in much, Jersey honey. Too, you so. do. Where in Jersey do you live? I live in Winslow area. Okay, wonderful. I hope you weren't affected too much by the by no, Ida. Goodness, yeah, no. we weren't either, thank yeah. God. And um thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. You're
Do you think alpaca herder was in your uh, wheelhouse when you started working here? <laughs> It wasn't, but it is now. <laughs> You're doing a fabulous job of well, hurting you. those little cuties. <laughs> yeah, so right now we're, to, uh, we're working on station training. Oh, wonderful. So we're on the same diet, but the goal is to have all four alpaca feed in here. Right. But we need them to stay at the home goal. Got right it. Now, Shamu is working on learning to stay here at his goal. He's pretty good at staying at his. Eventually, we're going to bring the other two in here at them station somewhere so we can feed our goats and sheep all over the yard from the fish behind. And what's the purpose of having them stay in their own bowls? So, get around the same amount of food, the same amount of food. Right, so you right. don't want people to overeat or undereat. Exactly. Like, I know Ziggy wants to try to come over here and yell, Shallow's bowl. Shallow is pretty good at pushing Ziggy away. Right. But if Shallow eats all his food, you go, buddy, you gotta take the sink. <laughs> you go over to Ziggy's bowl, and Ziggy will not try to push Shallow away. <laughs> <laughs> They're working you, dude. They are working you. Yeah, but like I said, we just started. You just need that. You need to emphasize that. What um, What are they feeding? What are they eating, rather? Like sweet peas, pepper grain. Oh, nice. Okay. And it's like dried up seeds and whatnot, minerals all mushed up into these little caps. And the pellets. Pellets. Yeah. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Hey, thank you so much. You have a wonderful day. What's your name, honey? Keep a miles. Nice to meet you, Adari Armstrong. You <laughs> take care, honey. Have a great day. You too. Bye, alpacas. Hey, the turkeys. Hey, turkeys. The Royal Palm Turkeys. How you doing? Beautiful. Look at you guys. You want to come to South Jersey? What a nice place you have to hang out. Beautiful old stone barn. Got some squirrels and birds in there to keep you company. And you're doing what birds do. Pecking and a scratching. See you later, cute turkeys. And look at these big beauties. Hello, you giant, gorgeous baby you. Hi, sweetheart. Keeping that grass short, huh? What a sweet face you have. Hello, sweet face. Look at your friend back there, just checking everything out. Giant tortoise, we love you. So slow, so sweet. It's been nibbling grass for 80 years. <laughs> Hello, cutie pie. You'll probably live longer than me. Have a wonderful rest of your life. Hey, do you know this certain leopard at the Bridgeton Zoo? Rollovers! Who's doing rollovers? Her name is Nakia. What's up, dude? Like, totally, Nakia. Oh my god.
big, yeah, we wouldn't get through all of Welcome to story time. What's happening? I'm your friend Miss Adoria and we're going to read some cool books today uh, about zoos. I hope you enjoyed your first part of our visit to the Philadelphia Zoo and weren't those critters incredible? Oh my goodness. What did we see today? We saw turkeys and alpacas and cheetahs and Hippos? Yeah, we saw some hippos. Rhinoceros? Oh my goodness, there were so many beautiful critters. Uh, I just, I was just amazed. This place is such a cool zoo and they do so much for biodiversity and conservation throughout the world. And uh, I just wanted to say a big thank you to Kristen Waldron for stopping and taking time out of her very, very busy day as chief of staff of the zoo to talk with us. And for that really nice uh, keeper, Miles, who talked to us about the training that he was doing for the alpaca. So what we're going to do first is we're going to read uh, a couple of pages out of this book called Wild Lives. It's a history of the people and animals of the Bronx Zoo. And if you want to come in and get it, it's in our nonfiction section. Uh, it's J59073, and the author is Zoefeld. The author is Kathleen Widener Zoefeld. Oh, yeah. And she is dedicating this book for William T. Hornaday and all those who dream of following in his pioneering footsteps passionate protectors of wildlife and wild lands. Look at that beautiful picture of, it looks like a lowland gorilla baby. Like a mountain gorilla. And look at that lemur! That's a ring-tailed lemur. You know, if you want to see a ring-tailed lemur, you don't have to go all the way to the Philly Zoo, although I do recommend it because it's a lot of fun. You can just go right here to Bridgeton to the Cohansic Zoo and we have our very own ring-tailed lemur. And he looks very lonely, so please go say hi. I wish he had a friend or two. So, Gesundheit. <laughs> I'm just gonna read this quote. The beauty and genius of a work of art may be reconceived, though in its first material expression be destroyed. A vanished harmony may yet again inspire the composer, 
but when the last individual of a race of living beings breathes no more, another heaven and another earth must pass before such a one can be again. That is from William Beebe, the bird. Yay, look at that giraffe. Oh, that's the other critters that we saw. We saw giraffes, right? Those three lady giraffes. One was a mother and a daughter, and the other one was a friend. So uh, when I was a little girl, uh, we moved from Philadelphia to Queens when I was about six, and we went to the Bronx Zoo a lot because it was very close, and it was really nice and big and beautiful. So this is all about the beginning of the Bronx Zoo. So on a cold, rainy afternoon in November of 1899, boy, that's over 120 years ago, director William T. Hornaday flung open the wrought iron gates of the Bronx Zoo for the first time. Horse-drawn carriages had arrived, carrying important people from all over the city. Look at all those important people. Don't they look important? The drivers parked outside the gates and the excited guests stepped out. Women in their long skirts and fancy hats, men in dark suits and derby caps rushed in and gathered for the opening ceremonies. The speeches were short and the crowds were soon staring in wonder at the bears and pressing to get a look at the buffalo and the elk and the caribou. Boys in knee pants and woolen socks hurried to see the storks and the pelicans in the aquatic bird's house. Girls in short frilly dresses gasped at alligators and pythons in the reptile house. Never had the visitors seen so many strange and fascinating creatures in one place. Look at that pelican. And you see this here? These are uh, zoo goers crowd around the bear dens on opening day. So many years went by and New York City grew, its skyscrapers blocking out forest and sky. The sound of trains and cars drowning out the songs of birds. New Yorkers came to consider the zoo up in rural woodsy Bronx, as it was that, at, that during that time, a pleasant diversion from the pressures of city life. And although zoo goers enjoyed the excitement of seeing unfamiliar or exotic animals, few inquired about the habitats those animals came from or what their, their lives in the wild must have been like. Unfortunately, most people regarded animals as objects to be captured and tamed or hunted and killed for pleasure or for profit. They regarded wild habitats as places to be developed or subdued for human uses. Unless an animal seemed truly abused and miserable in its cage, zoo-goers rarely questioned whether the confinement of animals could be justified solely for the sake of human pleasure and entertainment. But Mr. Hornaday wanted to change that. From the very start, he envisioned a new kind of zoo, a zoo that would entertain and educate, and a zoo that would help change people's indifferent or destructive attitudes toward wild animals. Today, people know that many wild animal species are threatened with extinction and that their wild habitats are rapidly disappearing. Over a hundred years ago, Hornaday and a few visionary people like him were among the first to recognize that wildlife was in grave danger. Here he is, Mr. Hornaday, sitting at his desk. He is the first director of the Bronx Zoo. He and the Bronx Zoo's founders took the first steps to protect wildlife, and they hoped to create a zoo that would give zoo goers a deeper respect for the animals and a greater understanding of their lives in the wild. So in 1896, before laying out the plans for the zoo, Hornaday traveled around Europe studying what the older zoos had done right and thinking about what things could be improved. The average European zoo of that day was only about 30 acres and the limited space meant that their animals were very closely confined, meaning they were in small spaces and probably right next to each other. Mr. Hornaday and the founders of the Bronx Zoo believed that this was bad for the animals. They saw that cramped, unnatural cages prevented people from learning about and appreciating the animals as wild, as wild creatures in their own right. 
So the founders announced that they would create a zoo where the living creatures can be kept under conditions very close to those which they would be found in the wild. And in spaces so big that with many species, species the sense of confinement is not so bad or it's, it's less than it normally would be if they were just at a cage with a concrete floor. Yet at the same time, the animals are not inaccessible or invisible to the visitor, which means that they weren't so far out into their enclosure that the people couldn't see them and enjoy them and see what they were doing. So here is a snow leopard looking at a lady in 1906, and you could see what kind of environment it has. It looks like a jail cell. It's concrete and brick and a cage, and that's it. There's no thing green, there's no water, there's no out, uh, access to the outside. And I remember as a little girl going to the zoo and seeing the big cats in cages like this and thinking, this is not right. Something is not right here. These animals look so sad. And sometimes they would just either lie there, wait for their food, or they would just pace back and forth because they you know, had nothing else to do. Imagine being in a cage for your life when you were a wild animal out in the jungle or the desert or the savanna, and then having to be in a cage like this. It's just not fair. So basically what the Bronx Zoo did was to redesign the way we thought about keeping animals in captivity. And do you see this? They designed the World of Birds rainforest. You could actually walk on a platform through a rainforest and the critters just can fly around and walk around and do whatever they want. So I'm saying that the Bronx Zoo does, does a really good job of providing, uh, you know, as close a uh, habitat as the animal would experience in the wild. And so does the Philadelphia Zoo. They're very concerned about keeping their animals as healthy and happy as possible. And so they can make more little animals and populate the area that they used to come from with their babies. It's just a great thing. So how about if you went to the zoo, what would you do? So this book is called I Went to the Zoo by Rita Golden Gelman and illustrated by Marianne Kowalski. Look at all those funny people. <laughs> Everybody's like two by two. This is actually a really funny book. So uh, Rita dedicates this book to Carolina, Francisco, Francisco, Carlos, and Isabel Restrepo, Juan and Carolina Blanco Restrepo, and their wonderful abuela, Amparo Yaramillo, and abuela means grandma. And Myra, oh, I'm sorry, Marianne dedicates this book to Jenny, Joanna, and Gregory. Hey, now this book was written back in 93, so I don't know what the zoo is going to look like, but we'll just have to wait and see. So here we are in a city. See this guy? What is he doing? He's carrying two pizzas. You see his car says pizza, ZZA. He's blocking the PI. This little kid's blowing a bubble. Here's an abuela going down the street with her doggy and her groceries, and all these people are just doing their thing in their apartments. She's shaking out a towel. This lady's on the stoops, getting ready to walk her dog. These ladies are talking to each other, and it. the kid says, the other day I went to the zoo. I don't know why I went to the zoo. It was a silly thing to do. The pandas were sitting, the camels were spitting, they were as bored as bored could be. Come home, I said. Come home with me. See what all these people are doing? The kid looks petrified on top of a camel. This lady doesn't look too happy. These people are just walking around with a balloon. These people are smooching on a bench. This lady's wheeling her cute little kid around. And these people are trying to get this little girl a drink of water, but it's not too successful. Because sometimes, you know, when you go to a water fountain, the water just splashes right in your face because you don't know how strong it's coming out. That's what was happening. So the kid says, 
The other day I went to the zoo. I don't know why I went to the zoo. It was a very, very silly thing to do. The monkeys were swinging, the koalas were clinging, the camels were spitting, the pandas were sitting. They were as bored as bored can be. Come home, I said. Come home with me. And here's our, our kid. I hope you can see it. Here's our kid over here eating hot dog. <laughs> the other day I went to the zoo. I don't know why I went to the zoo. It was a very silly thing to do. The rabbits were hopping. The pigs were slopping. The monkeys were swinging. The koalas were clinging. The camels were spitting. The pandas were sitting. They were as bored as bored can be. Come home, I said. Come home with me. He's letting the pigs out. No, the piggies are just wandering around. The other day I went to the zoo. I don't know why I went to the zoo. It was a silly thing to do. The penguins were sliding. The ostriches were hiding. The rabbits were hopping. The pigs were slopping. The monkeys were swinging. The koalas were clinging. The pandas were sitting. The camels were spinning. They were as bored as bored could be. Come home, I said. Come home with me. I don't know. It's a lot of critters to try to fit into your apartment. The other day I went to the zoo. I don't know why I went to the zoo. It was a silly thing to do. The horses were neighing. The mantises were praying. The penguins were sliding. The ostriches were hiding. Well, except for that one. The rabbits were hopping. The pigs were slopping. The monkeys were swinging. The koalas were clinging. The pandas were spitting. The camels were... Sp no, the pandas were sitting. <laughs> The koala. No, the camels were spitting. That's right. Get a little confused with all these critters. The other day I went to the zoo. I don't know why I went to the zoo. It was a silly thing to do. The hippos were soaking. The bullfrogs were croaking. The horses were neighing. The mantises were praying. The penguins were sliding. The ostriches were hiding. I can't even see them. Where are they? They're hiding. Oh, here they are. I see them. Uh, I spotted them. They're over trying to get a hot dog. The rabbits were hopping. The pigs were slopping. Somewhere. All right, I see some pigs right here. Okay. The monkeys were swinging. The pandas were sitting. The koalas were clinging. The camels were spitting. They were as bored as bored could be. Come home, I said. Come home with me. So the other day I went to the zoo and I didn't know what to do. See, there he is, look at him, he's, he's, he's holding a koala. The beavers were slapping. Where are they slapping? Oh, there they are. Beavers were slapping, the seals were clapping, the hippos were soaking, the frogs were croaking, the horses were neighing, the manises were praying. Oh, that door is open too now. The penguins were sliding, the ostriches were hiding, the rabbits were hopping. I see a rabbit. The pigs were slopping. The monkeys were swinging. Koalas were clinging. The pandas were sitting. And the camels were spitting. That's funny. The pandas really haven't moved at all. They were as bored as bored could be. Come home, I said. Come home with me. <laughs> oh, no. We've got more critters now. This is just crazy. The other day I went to the zoo. I don't know why I went to the zoo. It was a very silly thing to do. The tigers were crouching. The kangaroos were pouching. The beavers were slapping. The seals were clapping. The hippos were soaking. The bullfrogs were croaking. The horses were... I can't... Here they are. Look, they're out too. They're, all these critters are out. Look, there's a tiger out. He just opened the tiger cage. <laughs> the horses were neighing, the manises were praying, the penguins were sliding, the ostriches were hiding. Oh, I see one. The rabbits were hopping, the pigs were slopping, the monkeys were swinging, the pandas were sitting. Oh, look, one got up. <laughs> He's like, what's going on? Why aren't we out? The koalas were clinging up here on the tiger cage now. The 
camels were spinning. They were as bored as bored could be. Come home, I said, come home with me. Could we possibly fit any more animals into this situation? Oh yeah. The other day I went to the zoo. I don't know why I went to the zoo. It was a silly thing to do. The peacocks were posing. The elephants were hosing. The tigers were crouching. The kangaroos were pouching. The beavers were slapping. The seals were clapping. The hippos were soaking. The, rat, the bullfrogs were croaking. The horses were neighing. Where's the horses? I don't see the horses. Oh, there they are. I thought they, they look like camels for a minute. The mantises were praying. Gosh, I don't know where the mantises are so tiny. But I think maybe they're here on the on the elephant's back. Can you see that? I think so. The penguins were sliding. The ostriches were hiding. The rabbits were hopping. The pigs were slopping. The monkeys were swinging. Koalas were clinging. The pandas were sitting. The camels were spitting. They were as bored as bored can be. Come home, I said. Come home with me. He let all these critters out. Now they're all just hanging out in this little area. That's so funny. Look at the penguin. The penguin stopped sliding and now they're outside. Just walking around. Oh no. Here we go. The other day I went to the zoo. I don't know why I went to the zoo. It was a silly thing to do. The wolves were howling. Roar! The lions were growling. Roar! The peacocks were posing. The elephants were hosing. The tigers were crouching. crouching. The kangaroos were pouching. The beavers were slapping. The seals were clapping. The hippos were soaking. The bullfrogs were croaking. The horses were neighing. The mantis is praying. The penguins are sliding. The ostriches are hiding. The rabbits are hopping. The pigs are slopping. The monkeys are swinging. The koalas are clinging. The pandas were sitting. And the camels were still spitting. They were as noisy and bored as could be. It's time, I said, to come home with me. Look, he's letting the lions out. There's frogs and praying mantises and elephants and... Look at all these creatures. So two by two and three by three, I took the animals home with me. Do you see all of them? Oh my goodness. Look at the people on the street. They're like, what is going on? And here's a monkey that's hanging off of one of the elephant's tusks. <laughs> and look, there's a little Joey inside of the mama kangaroo pouch. As soon as the furniture started to break, I knew that I had made a big mistake. They were sitting and spitting and swinging and clinging, hopping and slopping, sliding and hiding, neighing and praying, soaking and croaking, slapping and clapping, crouching and pouching, posing and hosing, <laughs> howling and growling. They were as messy as messy could be. They couldn't, they shouldn't be home with me. Look, he's trying to save the lamp. What is his mom going to do? The, the ostriches are eating somebody's handkerchief, the tablecloth. The frogs are knocking off everything off this table, including the goldfish. But the, the goldfish is smiling. The tigers are nibbling on chairs. The lion is eating a book. This lion is sleeping under a pillow. The camels are spitting on everything. The kangaroos are just up in the air. The koalas are on his plants. The otters are just going insane with all the fruit. The rabbits, the pandas. The one panda has a lampshade on its head. That's really funny. They're still sitting there. They're looking at each other smiling. And the pigs are just hanging out. The rabbits are hanging out. The hippo has a, has a hat. That's a great picture, I love it. So much going on. So three by three and two by two, I took the animals back to the zoo. Look, everybody's on a leash, except for the peacocks. And guess who's leading this procession? The rabbits, that's right. The rabbits are leading everybody. The elephants, the horses, the camels, the penguins, the pandas, the seals, the pigs, the hippos, 
the frogs, the kangaroos, the rabbits, the tigers, the wolves, the otters, the koalas, the ostriches, just everybody. It's a lot of critters. And I don't know why I went to the zoo. It was a wonderful thing to do. And his mother is standing in the doorway with her shopping and looking at her house, which is completely trashed and torn apart. And the kid is just standing in the middle, saving a vase and smiling. That's a funny story. I really like that. I hope you like that too. Yay! Thank you, Rita Golden Gilman. Do you know that she is the author of more than 60 books for children? She is an avid traveler and she's lived with monkeys and gibbons and orangutans in their home, the tropical rainforest of Borneo. More recently, she has traveled to the Galapagos Islands, home to sea lions, iguanas, and penguins, among other. She lives in Bali and in Indonesia, and this happened to be her first book for Scholastic. So uh, the auth uh, the illustrator is really, she grew up a few blocks away from the Bronx Zoo in New York City, where she shared many afternoons communing with the polar bears and the camels. But now she lives in Toronto with her husband, her daughters, a dog, and a pair of hamsters. Yay! Thank you so much for tuning into the story portion of story time. Please stay tuned for our fun craft. And we hope you had a wonderful visit to the zoo today. Please stay tuned for next week for part two when we're having our uh, part two of our visit to our Philly Zoo. And stay tuned for a fun craft. We'll see you soon. Hey, everybody, what's happening? Welcome to the craft portion of our zoo visit story time. And today we're going to make a cheetah mask. Wow. Maybe you could wear it for Halloween. Or you could just wear it around the house and pretend to be a cheetah. That's right. So what I did was I have a big paper plate and a small paper plate and I painted them sort of a mustardy color. I couldn't really get that color. See how that cheetah looks sort of like a, like a light brown. But sometimes when they're in the sun where they live, they do have that kind of yellowy quality from the golden sun. So just imagine that your cheetah mask is, is a cheetah in the sun. And what are cheetahs known for? That's right, they run so fast. I think they could run up to like 70 something miles an hour, which is crazy. Imagine, you know, you're driving on the Garden State Parkway or on the Turnpike. Speed limit's about 65, you're doing like 70. That's how fast they can run. Wouldn't it be funny if you saw a cheetah just right alongside your car, like running? That's amazing, isn't it? Okay, so I think the first thing that we want to do is I want to draw the cheetah's face on the paper plate. And the reason why I made a smaller paper plate is because we're gonna cut out some ears out of this one and put it on here. So let's draw the cheetah's face. And I'm going to start with a Sharpie. And we're also going to cut out the eyes so that you can see out of it. So what does a cheetah's face look like? I think I'm going to start with the nose. And it's kind of a triangle, right? And then it comes down like this. Like there's your little nosey poo. It's such a cute little nose. I'm going to color it in. Cute little nose of the cheetah. Have you ever seen a cheetah in person? Well, you need to get to the Philly Zoo because they have two of them. Wasn't that cool to watch them run around? All right, so there is your cheetah. The next thing I'm going to do, cheetah nose, the next thing I'm going to do is draw the eyes. And their eyes are really nice, aren't they? They're beautiful. Here's another eye for you, Mrs. Cheetah. We're gonna cut these out so you don't have to do anything with them. 
but I might leave that little black there. Now, what's really cool is, let me just wipe my Sharpie off a little bit because it's not happy drawing on the paint. Okay, there we go. What I think is really cool about cheetahs is this line right here, how it kind of goes out and then it sort of makes their face and comes down to their mouth, right? It's kind of like an S. So here we're gonna do an S on the other side. And then their little mouth is so cute. When their mouth is closed. <laughs> when it's not closed, what do you see? You see their teeth and their tongue. Here, we'll give them a little bit of an open mouth. And we'll make this line just a little bit. Because this is their fur, all these different colors, right? This is the fur on their face. And how cool is that? And then they have these really cool, like, they almost look like they're crying their spots of tears along the side of their eyes. But it's just spots in their fur. And another thing is if you don't have a Sharpie, what you could do is you could take a little piece of a sponge and some black paint and you could just sort of like doop doop or a Q-tip and you could just dip it in paint and you could put as many dots as you want. So they just, I'm just gonna go crazy because they have all sorts of dots on their head too. They kind of have a line that goes up here and they just have little black dots everywhere. And if my Sharpie gives out, I'm really sorry, but it just doesn't like to draw on paint. But it's not doing too bad. And just remember, leave some room for the ears. The ears are so cute. Fuzzy and little. They don't really need big ears to run so fast, right? They don't really have any other dots. Their, their mouth is a little bit white, but they do have whiskers. They have white whiskers. So I was thinking maybe we could use the pipe cleaner, but I don't know. So here, let me just draw a few more dots on the side of her face. It's starting to look like a cheetah, don't you think? Seems to have a lot of dots up around here. That's probably to blend in, to camouflage with the grass and the, and the land that she lives on. So the little critters that she has to catch for lunch don't see her until the last minute when this crazy cheetah is flying at them at 70 miles an hour. That looks like a cheetah to me. Now the ears are cool because the ears have like are, t are like tinged with this black fur. So I'm just going to make two ears like this. And let me just wipe off the Sharpie because it's really like no paint, no more paint. It was an old one anyway. Oh, here it's coming back a little bit, but not really. So that's one ear. I'll do another ear here. Oh, look, it came back a little bit. Yay. And we'll cut out those ears. I'm gonna make my ears just like that. use that for? That could be a mask. You can hold it like this and put it up to your face. 
I don't know what that looks like. Maybe something you could put on your headdress. Okay, so let's see. Our ears. Oh, <laughs> I put them on upside down. But she just like, I can't hear it like that. Does it look better behind? What do you think? Behind or in front? I kind of like it behind better, don't you? All right, we'll put those on in a second. First, I want to cut out the eyes. Now, I'm going to, please be careful, okay? Get some help to do this. I'm just going to put a hole in the eye. Ow! Ah! And that's how you can start cut out the eye. And just be careful. And if you need to cut them a little bigger, because you can't see through them, or if you need to move the eyes a little bit, because they're either too far apart or too close together, you can adjust it. You can actually put this paper plate up against your face and sort of put dots on the paper plate for where your middle of your eye is, and then you could draw an eye from that. Okay. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Hey, look, it's a finger. And let's do the other one. Whoa. It's hard to do this. And if you mess up and you cut a little bit too into the mask, that's okay. You could tape it or fold it in. All right. Yeah, I just kind of folded it in and it looks all right. That one got a little bit cut up. Too much cut, but. So there's your cheetah mask, right? Now what I'm going to do, you could do one of two things. You can either put a big tongue depressor, I happen to have one that is the same color, on the back and you could tape it and so that you can hold the mask up to your face so you don't have to have it tied around your head. Or you could put holes in it. Let's see where that one is. You could put holes in it and take a piece of yarn. Let's see if I can find an end. There's no end to this yarn. Oh, there it is. And you could use it um, to tie it around your head. Let's see. Got that long. And you could then cut this in half. This yarn is very bouncy. And you can tie this in here. Tie it behind. Make a double knot so it doesn't come off. Do the other one. And then you have a nice way to tie it onto your head if you want to walk around your house or go outside and pretend to be a cheetah. Now I can't, unfortunately, the way the camera is positioned, I can't show it to you what it's going to look like when you put it up to your face. <laughs> but just imagine, if you will, there's a face under there looking at you. And for the ears, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna tape these puppies right on here. And so their ears are pretty much to the side. There's one ear. And there's the other ear. There's 
what that looks like. Oh, come back here, popsicle stick. Look at your cheetah. What do you think? Not exactly like the real thing, but hey, that's why they call it a craft. So either that, or you could put your popsicle stick on the bottom and hold it up, or you can tie these around your head. So thank you so much for tuning in today. We really appreciate you, all of you lovely people subscribing to our YouTube channel and watching and tuning in. We hope you enjoy the last story time and we hope you'll enjoy the next story time. So stay tuned for next week when we have part two of our visit to the Philly Zoo with even more exciting creatures. We're gonna be seeing dinosaurs and reptiles and oh my goodness, you're gonna love it. And a big thanks again to all the staff and the chief of staff and everybody that works at the Philly Zoo for making me feel so welcome and so happy to be there. So until then, thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, take it easy, and love your critters. Yay! Mask cam, mask cam.